What's up, everybody? Jordan here from Pulse Review, the place where you get a quick take on the hottest products. Today, we're actually gonna be doing a little YouTube studio tour. It's a little different than what we normally do. Normally, we just review some products, but what I'm gonna do today is go through my entire setup, talk about my thought process, and how I kind of made my tight space work for me. Let's get into it. I have a bedroom and I have my office. Now my office, I work in pretty much all day. It's a tight space, maybe eight by 10. Doubt that's gonna work out, having a YouTube studio in there as well as my desk and all my computer gear. So that basically left me with my bedroom. You probably can't tell, but to my right is my bed. And there's pretty much no other furniture in here. It's just my bed and my YouTube studio. So I had to make this space work for me. It's very tight and this room is actually pretty echoey. I've got some soundproofing up to mitigate that a bit, which I'm going to walk you guys through. So let's dive into it. Before I started doing my studio, I went on YouTube and probably did the same thing you're doing right now and looked at a bunch of different content creators and what they actually did in their YouTube studios. And bits and pieces from my studio are directly inspired from those videos. And I'm gonna be shouting out these channels throughout my video. That is a perfect segue into the soundproofing idea that I got from Make Art Now. Awesome channel, awesome content. Josh o is an expert at what he does and it's made clear by his videos. So definitely check him out. Basically, he took some home installation from Home Depot, pretty cheap and stuck some acoustical foam on top of it and had a ton of acoustical foam dampening the sound around him for not that much money. Sound panels, even those foam tiles you can buy are still kind of expensive and this is a great cheap way. It's portable and on the back side is a reflector. So if you're short on lighting and you need to bounce some light back, then you got a reflector on you. It's pretty nice. You are going to have to purchase some spray adhesive and cut the foam to the size of the board, but with a little bit of work, you can save a lot of money and get yourself a lot of soundproofing. Now, we have a ton of products to get through, so I'm gonna kinda move fast. I'm sorry if I don't go too in depth. I just don't want this video to be super long, so let's get into it. By the way, all of the equipment that we cover in this video is going to be linked in the description below. So if you wanna purchase any of it, check those out. Those links do earn me a small commission, which is actually a great way to support my channel without it costing you a dime. So appreciate it if you purchase with those links. One of the most overlooked yet most important parts of your YouTube studio is the lighting. So we're gonna start off with my key light. My key light is right here to the left, shining down on this side of my face, and it's actually the only light I'm using to light me. We do have a reflector on my right that's bouncing some of the light back in my face. It kind of fills in this shadow on the right side here, and it gives me kind of more dimension, and it just makes for a little bit more of an interesting picture. A lot of times you see people put lights directly in front of their face and it just kind of blows out all the shadows and kind of a lot of times you'll see bad glares on people's foreheads or noses. It's just not the best. And then if you're not using any lighting at all, you just have overhead lighting, you'll get these raccoon eye shadows and it's just really not ideal. If you want to up your production value, definitely put your light a little bit higher and off the center a bit so it's hitting you at an angle, creates this nice form shadow around your face, and get a big soft box. I went with the GVM LED light. This thing puts out a ton of light. Its color temperature is adjustable from 3200 to 5200 Kelvin, I believe. Let me double check that. Sorry, 5600 Kelvin. So you can get that nice warm or cool, whatever you want. You can actually control it with your app. So if the light's far away, you can just dial up the settings to whatever you want. And if you buy the bundle, then it will actually come with the soft box so you won't have to buy a separate attachment. All in all, I am very happy with this key light. This key light does come with a stand in the bundle, but you may wanna pick up a heavier duty stand like the C stand I'm using and some sandbags to weigh it down. 
Reason is if you start raising this light up pretty high, it is a heavier light, it can become top heavy, and you really don't want your stands falling over mid shoot. As I mentioned, only have one light for the key light that's lighting me, but the background has two separate lights that I'm gonna talk about right now. The light over here is by Yongnuo, I think I'm saying that right. It is the YN363. This is a great RGB light. It can go white light, it can go yellow light, so you can adjust the color temperature of that, or you can pick pretty much any color on the wheel. Its color rating index is a 95, which is great. It's battery powered, it's super portable. I love these lights. The only thing is it doesn't come with any sort of diffusion. So a little hack I learned from Make Art Now is to just put a little bit of foam over top the light and it kind of diffuses it. It's not perfect, but it's better than nothing. So as I mentioned, I'm using two lights to light my background and the other one is from Onfru. So full transparency, Onfru sent me this light in exchange for my honest review. With that said, it puts out a ton of light. I'm loving this thing. It is waterproof, comes with a remote, got 44 different keys in there. Those are all your colors. There's tons of different options. You can do a strobe, change the brightness, all kinds of features, but it's perfect for my solution. I can just plug it into the wall. I don't have to worry about batteries. It's not going anywhere. So it just lights up the bottom left corner of my screen, creates this nice gradient effect, and I love it. So the last thing to talk about as far as lighting goes is this reflector I have to the right of me that is bouncing back some light from the key light. It's also catching some of the RGB lights that I have going on. You can see some of that in my face on the right side here. So it's bouncing that back, filling out the shadows. You might need this, you might not. For me, I felt like I didn't really need another light to shine on my face. I just wanted to bounce a little bit of light back onto the scene. So I went with a reflector and I also found a way to jury rig it so I don't have it attached to a stand. I was trying to minimize how much stands are on the floor. So to do that, I have a few different products here. I got one clamp from Small Rig. You can mount it to basically anything circular or square and I have that attached to a newer clamp. So that is clamped on to the reflector. And then I have another clip. It's just a basic muslin cloth clip. And uh, that is clipped to the other Yang Nuo light. And it's holding this reflector up. I'm not using any floor space. Definitely awesome. But next I wanna talk about what is holding up my laptop and my microphone. So I got this really nice sit stand mount for my laptop and normally it also houses a monitor stand. I have a sit to stand desk. I ended up going with a stand option. Feels a little more natural to me in my studio to just be standing. So it suits my needs there. This thing is actually holding quite a lot. It's holding my laptop. It's holding what would be a monitor arm. It's holding my microphone and microphone arm as well as supporting this reflector to my right. A lot going on, but I really love this stand. Highly adjustable, comes with a bunch of different cable management clips. Definitely check this one out in the description. So lighting and camera equipment are super important, but just as important, if not more important, is your audio quality. I was looking to improve my setup. I wanted something that didn't include a cord, like a lapel mic attached to me. So I already had this shotgun microphone. I used the Rode VideoMic Pro, and that is attached to a microphone arm that would normally be mounted to a desk, but this laptop stand is sturdy enough that I could mount it to the monitor arm. Now, this whole rig I got set up here was inspired from DSLR Video Shooter. Definitely check him out if you're looking to build a YouTube studio. He has a ton of amazing videos if you haven't already found him yet. So what's so cool about this microphone setup is it can get really close to my face. The shotgun only collects audio information for the most part of directly in front of it. So I kind of aim it at my chest. And then what's pretty awesome is if I zoom out here, you can see there's the microphone and it's on this arm that I can just easily move it up a little bit, put it out of frame. Still got this light I'd have to move, but if I want a different shot, I can just lift it up a little bit. 
and then tighten it back up, dip it down until I just about see it. And then now you know, okay, gotta push it just back up. So this microphone is super close to my face without it being in frame. And it gives you the best audio you can pretty much get. This next piece of equipment might be one of my favorite additions to the studio, and that is this wall mounted boom arm. So what's so great about it is it keeps another light stand off of the floor. And a lot of the setup time in my studio was pretty much setting up the lights, setting up the cameras, setting up the microphone. It's a lot of time that is saved if I don't have to put up another stand. I'm able to mount this to the wall, it telescopes in and out, it's adjustable on the angle 180 degrees, comes with a quarter inch and eighth inch thread, you can mount whatever you want to it, camera, lights, microphone, it's super versatile. I highly recommend if you have a wall nearby where you're gonna be shooting, to pick one of these up, you won't be disappointed. One more thing I should tell you guys, if you are going to mount a camera to this boom arm, you're going to need a tripod head. I went ahead and picked up a Manfrotto ball head. It allows me to adjust the exact camera angle I need to get that nice top down angle from above. So that's what I use for the top down angles. For my main camera angle, this talking headshot you're seeing right now, my camera is on a Manfrotto tripod with a fluid head. And that's great for when you're doing panning or tilting shots. I do lots of those for when I'm filming B-roll of the products and I want that smooth tilt or pan just to kind of add a little bit of you know, interest and spice to my videos. So pick one of those up if you're going to be filming any kind of tilt or pan shots. Otherwise, pretty much any tripod will do. Sorry to interrupt the video, but I'm literally sitting here editing it right now. I don't know about you, but if you spend any amount of time on your computer without fail, I'm starting to slouch forward, my neck slides forward, and it just puts a lot of pressure on my shoulders and on my back. So to help this, I've actually been using the chirp wheel and it's helped me out quite a bit. It's kind of like a foam roller and it comes in three different sizes, which is what makes it a little unique. I'm gonna go through a quick demo, just kind of show you how to use it. If you know you want a little bit more intense massage, you use a smaller one, and then as they go up, they lessen the amount of pressure on your back. So I have a discount code. I think it's gonna give you a percentage off. And anyways, check it out. Link's gonna be down below in the description. Hope you guys like it. Last thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is the table. So. I need a table for my product reviews and you know just to get those top down shots I wanted something with a wood top sturdy but also I like the idea of having something on wheels so if I wanted to I could shift my setup around a little bit and it wouldn't be that hard so I picked up this desk from Home Depot it's Husky brand I believe this is a 52 inch size it comes in a bunch of different sizes I think it goes all the way up to 72 inches if you need something really wide. And it's also a sit to stand desk, so it's got a manual crank on the right side of it. Really easy to put together, didn't take much time at all. Comes in black and white. Not sure what else you can say about it, but this was a must have for me. Oh, and best part is, it was only $200. So that's pretty much every piece of equipment I have in my setup. If you are starting a YouTube channel, don't get paralyzed by thinking about all the different equipment you need and all the money you have to spend just to put out good content. You really don't need all of this stuff. You just need some way to record yourself and some good ideas and you have yourself a YouTube channel. So I'm gonna leave you with that. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. I'll see you in the next video. What's going on YouTube? Welcome to my channel, Pulse Review. I'm Jordan and we're f***ing up intros. If you do, I am part of Amazon's affiliate program, so fully transparent. So I encourage you guys to do it too. Nah. And you're worried about all this money you're gonna have to spend on the equipment, then swat that thought right out of your head. Swat that thought. What?